Ina mana, ina reo, uh, kira tato katoa. Uh, uh, thank you, Scott. Um, I'm rather humbled by your introduction. Uh, can I just start by um, acknowledging you all in the room uh, and thanking you all uh, for the work that you do uh, every day uh, and the passion that you show uh, in our communities um, to solve this housing crisis. Uh, I know you all care about the issues that we face uh, that Kay's outlined. Uh, as I've said uh, to people in the audience today and other forums that I've spoke, spoken to as well, I care. Uh, and I believe together uh, we can take a system approach and we can solve this. Uh, and we can be in a situation unlike we have today, uh, where we have too many people on our streets. Uh, we have a risk of a generation of people who can't afford to live in a home. Uh, and we have a quality of housing which none of us in many parts of the country uh, can be proud of. Critically, uh, to Scott's point, uh, this is going to take a collective effort um, from all of us uh, to work together in a different sort of way. Uh, and when I talk about housing system, government plays an important part, uh, but iwi plays a critical role here. Uh, the community housing sector plays a role uh, as does local government, uh, the private sector, banks. Uh, and I'm not too sure whether I'm agreeing or disagreeing with Kay about whether it's complex or not. It doesn't feel straightforward. Uh, but certainly, uh, I believe that uh, I know the energy uh, is there for all of us um, to take a giant step forward uh, as, we go, as we go forward. I've certainly appreciated uh, the engagement I've had to date um, from many of you. Um, many of your faces in the room are familiar with me. Uh, familiar to me, uh, and as I say, uh, your passion and your drive to get a better outcome for, for our society uh, is palatable. Today I want to just broadly focus on probably three things, I think, is where I've got to. <laughs> uh, first of all, was giving you a sense of the institutional changes that are at play, which I believe are critical, uh, necessary but not sufficient, uh, in terms of how we go forward as a country in this space. I want to outline to you just some initial thoughts that I've got around uh, what a well-functioning housing system might look like. And I purposely talk about initial thoughts because if we're going to partner together properly, um, I don't have the answer. And I've given you, some idea, given you some thoughts about what this might look like. And thirdly, I want to cover off um, how we might work together uh, going forward. Because uh, at the end of the day, that's critical. If I start with the institutional changes, uh, and I know some of you are familiar with this, but I just want to um, quickly summarise where we're at and also uh, talk a little bit more than I have in previous sessions about where we are uh, in terms of the ministry and, and the capability we're building and where we are at a point in time. So there are two fundamental things going on, right? Uh, there's the, the setup of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, which has been in place since 1 October. And we fundamentally uh, have a responsibility and a mandate that no other ministries had before uh, in the history of the public sector to own the housing outcomes, the housing and urban outcomes in our society. Often what's happened in the past is that when there's been housing issues, they often sometimes flick to the economic side or the social side, but housing and urban is front and centre in terms of what's, what's expected of this ministry. Secondly, uh, the government's also wanting to join up the delivery arm. Of, of, of what we do, uh, and that's the creation of an urban development authority, uh, just named Kainga Ora Homes and Communities, and the legislation got introduced to the House last week, and the intent is to uh, set this agency up from 1 October this year. I'll just quickly talk about uh, the Kainga Ora Homes and Communities, and I'll, then I'll, I'll, I'll move back to uh, talking a bit more about uh, housing and urban development. So in terms of Kayangora Homes and Communities, as I say, uh, it, it's going to start from 1 October. Fundamentally, it's going to have two roles. Uh, it will be uh, a public housing landlord, uh, and it will be the development arm of the government. So it brings together Housing New Zealand, HLC, uh, and Kiwi Build. Uh, we're not waiting till 1 October. Uh, there's an establishment board already set up, uh, chaired by Sir Brian Roach, and I'm on that. We have already brought together uh, the development arm pieces of Housing New Zealand, HLC and Kiwi Build, and they are working as a virtual team uh, as of a couple of weeks ago. And we'll continue to ingrain that and develop that and ensure uh, that there was there was one door to the market in terms of how we in terms of how the Crown engages uh, in this space. 
There's lots of work to do to get things set up for one October. We've got to look at the board, chief executive, um, make sure we've got things in place um, that demonstrate that there is a different organisation in place uh, from one October, and we're frantically working to get that up and running. Uh, and I look forward to telling you more about that um, over the next few months. If I go back to uh, Housing and Urban Development the Ministry, uh, I've said before that um, there are three things uh, that the Minister's um, sat me down and said, Andrew, this is what I want you to focus on. And I'm not going to go too much about those, talk too much about those today. Uh, they're basically, we've got to be outward focusing. Uh, we've got to ensure that we understand the evidence base and decision makers get the right evidence and the right information. And that doesn't mean we're experts ourselves, because many experts are sitting in the room, and one of them's to my right. Uh, and so we need to gather the information and knowledge from others. And the third thing is we've got to break the silos down, because it's disaggregated uh, and it's fragmented and we've got to sort that out. So we've taken that objective of what the government wants for a ministry to own the outcomes uh, and taken uh, how, how the minister wants us to operate and developed some foundations for the ministry. I want to talk to you a bit more about that today. So first of all, we've developed a purpose, and the purpose um, I'm really proud of. It's uh, thriving communities where everyone has a place to call home. So fundamentally, this is about communities. It's about homes, it's not about houses. Uh, and it's about how we work together with you all to get better outcomes in our communities, of which there are broader outcomes we all aspire to um, in terms of um, broader wellbeing objectives. So that's, that's the purpose of how we see the work that we do as an organisation. We've come up with a set of values, uh, and there are three of them. Uh, the first one's drive. Now, drive often can mean different sorts of things, um, but the words I'm, the way I'm interpreting that, it's about action. We've got to do some things with you together, both in a shorter and a long-term sense, because things need to change, they need to be fixed, and we're going to have to drive some change with you. The second value uh, is empathy. Uh, don't think I need to say much too more about that, but that's the organisation that I want to build and want to be working with you all, because that's to me at the heart of a lot of what we're trying to do here. And thirdly, uh, curiosity. Uh, we need to ask questions and learn from you all, because many of the answers, frankly, are sitting in rooms like this, uh, and so we need to be a curious organisation. Um, the worst thing we can do is think that we have the answers. Uh, so drive, empathy and curiosity uh, are the values that we will operate to and aspire to be uh, as an organisation. We've also uh, come up with five principles of how we're going to operate. Uh, and again, I think if you, if you take these principles together, um, they give you a sense of what I think this really means in practice in terms of how I'd like this to play out over the years ahead. So first, the first principle, it's long term. We need solutions that are going to stick. There's been too much short term stuff play out in the space band-aid solutions that don't work, so we need to work with you to actually ensure that we have stuff in place that is long-term, because that's where we're going to get uh, the real gains that matter. Second principle is system-wide. Uh, as I said before, it's not about just government, but it's, it's about all of us, and the system-wide in my, my book is about how we all work together and take a collective view of, and a transparent view of what's going on. Our third principle is people-centric. Because people's aspirations need to be at the heart of everything that we do, because that's what it's all about. Fourth principle is treaty anchored. I want our organisation to be a genuine treaty partner, and we need to ensure that that's at the core of everything that we do, how we think, and how we act. And our last principle uh, is Fenua based. Uh, people's identity arises from the place. And it's really important as we go forward that in the work we do, we take a place-based approach to things uh, and support locally owned solutions. So there are our five principles that we're looking to embed uh, in our organisation. And I ask you, um, as we go forward, uh, to work with us in terms of the purpose, the values and the principles we've got to hold us to account as we work with you, uh, as I say, going forward. In order to deliver on all this, we've clearly um, we've got some capability um, in place. Uh, we are the amalgamation of effectively four parts of government. Uh, 
Uh, there's the public housing piece, and Scott Gallagher's here today as the Deputy Chief Executive. Uh, so he was an MSD, so that's become part of the new ministry. Uh, we've also got uh, the policy piece that um, has come over from MSD. Uh, and um, we've got Kiwi Build that will transfer over to uh, the new Kainga Ora Homes and Communities. Uh, and we have uh, the uh, policy piece from MB um, in terms of the economic side of the ledger, the work that we're doing. So we have some capability, we've got really good capability. To deliver on what I'm articulating, we, we also need to build some other capability and we need to develop, develop a, a culture along the lines of what I'm talking about. So we've got a, as I say, we've been in place since one October, we've got a new structure uh, that is gonna kick in from 1 July. Uh, and so the new leadership team, I'm, we'll be in a position to announce that to you uh, in the next week or so. Uh, and I'm really pleased and proud of the people uh, that we've got on board uh, to help me uh, work with you as we, as we, as we go forward. The, the leadership, uh, sorry, the, the structure of the organisation, at one level I don't want to bore you with detail, but I do just want to let you know what, what it is because I think it reflects what I've just talked about, but also what I'm going to say about what a well-functioning system looks like. So there will be a group called System Performance. There will be a group... Uh, which is about the system, housing and urban settings, which is about the core foundational policies that will need to be put in place. There will be a group called place-based programs. Uh, and there will be a group called Te Kahui Kaiangora. Uh, we are effectively building a Maori housing unit in the organisation uh, that reflects our commitment to being treaty anchored and reflects our commitment to delivering on outcomes for Maori because they need to be improved and the outcomes for Maori are not good, as many of us know. And, the, and, and we also have, as I say, our Scots Group um, Public Housing Supply in terms of the delivery piece, which many of you work with. So we're very much into uh, uh, the next phase. Uh, I wouldn't so much call it a reset, but it's the it's next phase of the development of our internal journey. Um, a lot of work has gone on over the last nine months. Um, as we've been both building the organisation and alongside that working with the government uh, on their critical priorities. I'll just turn to now to just talk quickly a bit about, because um, this is a bit that Scott might have asked me to talk about, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the elements of a well-functioning system. You know, I do think the word system can be a bit overused, uh, and I, I jokingly sometimes say it's the most overused word in the public sector. Um, but but I but it, it's and certainly just like the word strategy. But I just want to put some meat on the bones around uh, what I think system so well functioning system means in this in this in this case, and hopefully building on some of the thoughts uh, that Kay's articulated to you. So in, in my mind, um, and I'm, again, I'm happy to talk to you about this and get your thoughts about this, but there are probably four reasonably critical elements to this that do into play. So the first one is ensuring that there are reforms in place, in place or best practices put in place uh, that are system-wide. And that's sort of often your legislative program, things like the healthy homes work the current government's doing, things around like the Residential Tenancies Act, uh, the building laws that, uh, that Kay's referred to, uh, work on the urban um, growth agenda, those sorts of things. So that's one part of, uh, of having a well-functioning system, is making sure those things are relevant, best practice and up-to-date, that cross-cutter system. The second element is ensuring that we introduce a place-based approach that identify specific strategies and solutions that are tailored to particular locations and markets. And we need to be transparent about what we're doing and how we're working with you in this space. Now, I believe this is pretty fundamental to how we go forward. Uh, and I'm not suggesting we don't do things in place now, we do, but I think we need to do it at a different level, us collectively understanding and owning uh, what is happening in different places of the country and how do we work together. We are piloting this in Hastings at the moment. Uh, we chose Hastings because it has the highest increase in the public housing register over the last year. Uh, and we're working with uh, the local Liwi and local council to collectively understand the housing issues at play here and how can we actually um, solve them together. And I'm really encouraged by the work that's going on there and you'll hear more about that, but it's that sort of concept that we need to work out and, and work with you all across the country. So again, we just need to know 
what's happening across the continuum in different parts of the country, understand demand, supply, what the problem definition actually is in different parts, because it's not the same. Um, how do we, what's the funding that's going on? Um, who should do what? Uh, and ensure that we've actually got clarity of roles uh, as we go forward. The third area in terms of having a well-functioning system, we do need some delivery plans. Now that might sound a bit mechanical, but actually we need action and we need clarity about who's doing what and why they're doing it. And ensuring that both government resources and local resources and accountabilities uh, are all understood uh, as we go forward. Now I'm not, I'm not standing here suggesting that this is easy. Um, I am, I do believe it's a shift, uh, but I believe it's fundamental uh, to where we need to go to uh, as we go forward. The fourth piece of the picture is that we can't stand still here. Um, things are going to change and adapt. We are in a society that things move around all the time. So market intelligence and monitoring progress and the outcomes that we want needs to be front and centre as well so that we can tweak things, adjust programs, and make sure that the funding um, occurs in the right places at the right time. So I, what I'm hoping is that, um, as I say, to talk to you and discuss with you a bit about those elements, but if we have these things in place, then I think we're far better placed. Uh, it's not quite language, is it? We're far better, in a far better situation um, to improve the outcomes that we want. So that takes me to, uh, how do we make all this work uh, and how can we work together uh, going forward? Uh, leadership is critical. Uh, and leadership of all this doesn't sit with me. Uh, it sits with you all in the room and how are we going to figure out together taking this whole system approach and putting it into practice? Yeah. Questions like, where is the leadership? How, how are some things going to be joined up? What are the various roles that people are going to play? How do we best partner? Do we understand what partnership really means? How do we collectively put things in place at the right place at the right time? And how do we think about what needs to happen in the short term um, versus the long term? Because I'll quote Kay, because I was, um, you didn't say this today, but um, I was, it seems that um, Kay and I are double teaming a little bit. We're in a, in a hui on, in West Auckland on Friday um, around homelessness and in her presentation there she said that we've dug ourselves a hole as a country um, and uh, we've got to dig ourselves out of the hole and as we do that we've got to think quite hard about the longer term changes we're making in conjunction with some of the short term things that have to happen uh, and I think that's quite a, um, a powerful analogy that Kay used last week. So I'm deliberately posing some questions Right? Because the collective wisdom, as I say, um, and input can come from many parts. Uh, and, I, and I want us all, um, as we go forward, uh, to help figure this out. One thing that you'll have heard me say a couple of times, um, which I'm absolutely keen on, is transparency. So we've got to be transparent and clear about what's happening and why it's happening. So we need to have a heat map of the country of what's going on, understand the different outcomes. We need to understand what's going on in different parts because different markets have different challenges and you all need to know and understand that. That's what we have to get to. And then we need to work out actually um, in terms of each area where some of the priorities might be and what that might look like. So I think transparency uh, is fundamental core of where we go to next. A couple of other thoughts. In terms of starting points, uh, there's no doubt uh, that iwi are critical to this. There's no doubt that the role local government plays is critical to this. And in, alongside that, and to be a bit more specific um, in terms of this conference um, and the roles that people are playing in this, in this conference, I want to be clear that as a starting point in terms of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, we're, we're very keen to ensure that our starting point relationship with the community housing sector is with community housing Aotearoa, right? So I want us all to think about what that means in practice and how we're going to work together, because that'll be our starting point in terms of how we go forward. Equally, in terms of the Māori housing sector, our starting point uh, will be the relationship that we have with Tamara Pihi. And I, I'm not saying they're the only two people, uh, 
bodies that we have a relationship with. But what I am saying, if we're going to get collective leadership and we're going to work together, those two organisations play an absolute critical role. And as we go forward from 1 July, I will personally invest and our organisation will personally invest in ensuring uh, that those organisations with us are working together um, to get the system-wide view into, into action. So just to finish, what are you going to see next? Well, uh, I'm, I'm wanting us, me, our organisation, um, to communicate with you more and uh, about a direction and how we're going to put it in practice. I've been a bit more specific today about some of the things, some of the things of where we're at, but you will be hearing more from us about what this means in practice. Having a permanent leadership team on board is a big shift in terms of how we will be able to do that with you. What also will happen next, as I've alluded to, is the setup of Kainga Aura, uh, homes and communities. And that needs to be established and it's got to be more connected and it's going to have to have a collaborative style in terms of how it works going forward. Uh, there will be more clarity coming out from the government around uh, the Kiwi Build reset. And what will also happen is we will progressively put in place uh, some of the place-based stuff that I'm talking, of, talking about, building on the Hastings example um, in the months ahead. So what does success look like? In terms of a well-functioning system, at one level, uh, it's about how, at any point in time, we understand the housing and urban picture in a strategic sense right across the country and what's going on. And at a local level, we also understand the solutions that are at play and how we're working together and taking a whole community approach. And at any point in time, uh, we are moving things around and shifting things depending on what we understand and what our people need and want in terms of what the, uh, the intelligence and the market is telling us. At another level, there's something far more fundamental. It's about ensuring that we do have thriving communities where everyone has a place to call home. There is no quick fix, uh, however, uh, this is a massive opportunity uh, that we all have. because so I personally believe uh, that we can put in place uh, sustained change. If we can work together, and I know we will, uh, and understand the issues at play uh, and work out a way forward. Uh, thank you very much. I look forward to working with you. Uh, nā rewa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Or I get a seat. Just we've got okay. Oh, you might have to stay here. Sorry, I set you up badly. So thank you, people, because we have had some questions rolling in, um, and we will take the top one. Kelda Andrew, you can see that. Thank you, Paul, for that question from the Christchurch City Council. You can come. Oh, we've got too much technology available. That's fine. Uh, so the question is, what is your understanding of working, partnering and deciding with local communities about their priorities when the UDA comes to town? Uh, so uh, Kaingaora Homes and Communities is an important piece of all this. Um, when I talk about partnership, um, I'm talking about partnership in a broad sense, all right? So that'll be ourselves as the ministry, uh, Kaingaora Homes and Communities, iwi uh, and local communities. We need to figure out together what's needed in different parts um, of the country, and that's the intent of the legislation, all right? Uh, the UDA will have some powers uh, and some things that can be used to fast track things and ensure that different processes um, can occur, but they won't be doing it in isolation. Uh, they'll be doing it understanding and working with you all in the first instance. And that's what's in the legislation, and that's the plan, and that's how it intends to work. Uh, We've got a bit of work to do yet to um, take what I've just said uh, and, and work out what that really means in practice in terms of different people's roles. Um, but at a higher level, I sort of think that we've all, as I say, we've all got roles to play. We will work with you all to work out where, where in the parts of the country do we need to put in place particular um, things or interventions and, um, and the UDA 
um, would then work with you all to figure out what that means in practice. Um, if I'm trying to sort of separate out the two roles to make it a bit clearer. Uh, I'm happy to say to you all right now, um, we're all clear on intent. Uh, we're working through right now uh, what that actually means in practice. And that's why we will talk to you and engage with you as this legislation gets developed um, over the next year. Uh, questions, quality housing as a human right would include um, some minimum expectations like heating and ventilation. Given the current building code largely requires neither, how will HUD address this? Well, there's, there's a lot going on in the space um, at the moment in terms of the, what, the, what, the, the, what work the government has done around uh, healthy homes and the work that it's doing also uh, around the Residential Tenancy Act. Uh, this, is a, this is a really good example of some fundamental things that need to be put in place when I talk about the system and the cross-cutting things that are needed. Uh, and as, as we go forward, uh, as we engage with you properly, um, these are the sorts of things where I think we'll have a joint understanding uh, about what really matters. I think what's gone on in the past, we probably haven't had a joint understanding at any point in time about the critical things that are needed, uh, such as um, you know, basics around ventilation and heating. So the more we can collectively get that view together, it'll be easier for us um, to engage with, with governments about what really needs to, what really needs to go on. Uh, so there's that one. Do you want me to do the third one as well? Go for it. Right. Uh, I don't know the answer to that right now. Uh, is access to an accommodated rent subsidy going to be extended to council housing that I did so I required to find out when HNZ and council were specially beneficiaries? Look, I'm well aware that the... the uh, I'll put it, the coverage of the income rate of relent subsidy has been a, a point of debate uh, um, for many years. Uh, we are not doing any work on that right now that I'm aware of, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm quite conscious um, that is something which um, local government um, uh, sees as an important issue and matter to discuss with government. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, Scott, but I think that's where we're at. Is that right? Yeah. Is this going? Or? Yes. Yeah, it is. Okay. Th thank you. I don't want to cross cut on Andrew, but I would like to say a couple of things around um, the UDA, but also where local communities work. Local communities are capital starved. Housing is infrastructure, and central government needs to work that out. And so one of the issues here is not about UDA coming to town. I know, Paul, that that's what it might feel like. My fear is UDA won't come to town. And that actually most of the country will not have the opportunities for the sorts of investments that might be thinking thought about in terms of uh, the, the Urban Development Authority. And where does local government lie in that? And we have actually a, a splendid example uh, in New Zealand about how local government has addressed housing need and invested in the housing in infrastructure down at Queenstown. And we need to look at those models and support them and nurture them, not exclude local government from that, but support them to think about housing as part of the, the infrastructure that makes people's lives worthwhile and encourages economic as well as social development and cultural sustainability. That's what infrastructure is for. And, and we need to really commit to that. Can I just say something on the quality of housing? We do have um, ventilation and, and heating uh, minimum standards in the building code. In fact, they keep on and on and on in there. What, um, what part of our problem is that the building industry often doesn't comply. Uh, that's a different issue, doesn't apply, of course, to the built stock, it only applies to the new built stock. And there's a big hole in our, our building uh, standards. New Zealand is one of the few jurisdictions in the so-called Western world that excludes residential housing from universal design, accessibility. You don't have to have any accessibility features in New Zealand housing. You do in public buildings, so-called, it's a different issue. You don't in New Zealand. 
Why would that be? We have one of the world leaders in terms of d designing accreditation standards for accessibility, functionality, and ensuring people throughout their life course can live and, and operate in their homes, and yet we choose not to do that. So I think that for all of us is one of the big challenges, and I think it's one of the big challenges for, for you, Andrew, too. You know, I think that everybody would be absolutely thrilled if the minister could come to the view that that's something that we need in New Zealand. And it will save us a bomb of money in modifications, high dependency, putting people into rest homes, the lot. And the, the, the final thing um, is um, around the uh, issue of, of IRR, income-related rents. I have mixed views around this. The reality is that most people are going to be renting in the private market, and I have to congratulate the government, and I look forward to the Residential Tenancies Act delivering on what the um, bill currently, or the, the consultation currently uh, 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 offers. But the reality is, for people in rural areas, for people in, uh, in provincial towns, Actually, home ownership, I'm not a great believer that home ownership is the best and the only way you can get good housing, but in New Zealand, it is, actually. That's the experience. And so we need to be thinking about why we've moved from, for the nation as a whole, from somewhere around 80% in home ownership to we'll be lucky to be hitting 48% within 20 years, and why Māori have moved from 60-odd percent they'll be lucky in 20, 30 years if they're hitting 15% of home ownership. And that's where I really encourage um, Hood really to work with the community housing sector around intermediate tenures, the commitment to affordable housing building and the commitment to provision.